Hey everybody, welcome back. We are still on elasticities, okay? In fact, right now what we are on is price elasticity of demand. The number one elasticity measurement pretty much taught in every economics course, okay? There's a lot of different types of elasticity measurements, but this is the one we usually start with. Price elasticity of demand. Now, we're gonna go through the formulas for this uh, measurement. However, before we do it, I want to talk about elasticity in a general way again. I did this in part one. I want to do this again really quickly. What is elasticity? It is a measurement of responsiveness. It is a measurement of the responsiveness of a dependent variable to an independent variable. That is the key, okay? So the formula, the general formula for elasticity, this will never let you down, is percent change in a dependent value over the percent change in an independent value. If you know this general formula, you can handle any elasticity measurement. Sure, you can handle price elasticity of demand, but you can handle price elasticity of supply, cross price elasticity of demand, income elasticity of demand, or any other elasticity measurement anybody ever throws at you. You just gotta say, hey, what's the dependent variable? What's the independent variable? And I've got the formula, okay? Let's even see this play out, okay? Let's put generally what is the formula for price elasticity of demand. It is percent change and the dependent variable. Well, is price dependent on quantity demanded or is quantity demanded dependent on price? Here's the key, quantity demanded is dependent on price. So the dependent variable is quantity demanded, percent change in price. For some change in price, percent change in price, what is the percent change in quantity demanded? Now that's the general formula, okay? Now, we're gonna get to the simple formula, just kind of expressing this, going ahead and filling in what we mean by percent change or what's the formula for percent change. And then we're gonna do this midpoint formula, which is gonna be a superior formula, but hold on to that, okay? I'll explain that in just a second. So, percent change in QD, percent change. Well, how do you find percent change in anything, okay? It's just a simple formula, and we all need to know it because this will help you in science classes or any other class. It is new minus old over old. That's right, percent change in anything. New minus old over old. Sometimes you'll hear mathematicians say final minus initial over initial. But what's final minus initial over initial? It's new minus old over old, okay? So we're gonna do new minus old over old for the, for the quantity demanded and new minus old over old for the price. So very simple, not hard to write out, okay? So we've got Q, D new minus Q D old over Q D old. So we just did the percent change in Q D and we know the percent change in Q D we put over the percent change in price. So it's just price new minus price old over price old. There it is. That's the simple formula. And so often in classes and even on like AP tests, this will be good enough. This is all you need. However, there is a problem. There's a little bit of an issue, okay? Because see, when we're talking about a demand curve, we care about the elasticity of a particular range. See, I've got A to B, okay? Now here's the key. We wanna have a single number that represents the elasticity of that range. But if you use this formula, the simple formula, it matters what you pick as the old and what you pick as the new. Take a look at this. I got P sub zero, P sub one. So I basically got a price increase, right? So P sub zero, we're gonna say that's the old value. So I got A, that's my old, B. Well, when I use this formula, I'm gonna get a PED value. But if I simply switched and said, hey, no, 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 how about if the price went down and I started at here is P0 and therefore I'm gonna switch my A and my B. We're going from that dot to that dot. Here's the problem. This formula would get you a different value for your PED. That's right. It matters what you pick as old and what you pick as new, okay? As far as are we going from A to B or are we going from this dot to that dot? And you get two different values, whether you pick this one first or that one first. So, simple formula, pretty decent, gets you a lot of the answers that you need to know for a lot of questions. But some professors, okay, an AP test sometimes wants you to know this midpoint formula, a superior measurement. This is truly gonna get you one single value for a range, okay, on the demand curve, this entire range, and we're gonna get a single value because it doesn't matter what we pick as old and new because we're not picking old and new, we're using the midpoint. Now, this formula is gonna seem kind of big, but it's really simple, guys. It really is simple. I want you to just kind of see what we've done so far, right? Percent change in QD, percent change in price, 
All of us can have that down. New minus old over old, if you can do this, and you know new minus old over old, you can do this. The midpoint formula, just a little bit more involved, but not much, okay? We still want the delta in QDs. So QD, okay, and this doesn't matter. We put 0, 1, it doesn't really matter. 0, well, let me put 1, but I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. Zero, QD1 minus QD sub 0, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to find the midpoint, okay? The midpoint for the quantity demanded. Well, how do you find the midpoint? It's super easy, okay? It's basically the formula for averaging. But all we got to do is QD1 plus QD0 over 2, okay? That is the midpoint of QD. We found that value right there. So, this thing, what I like to say is this top part right here, we just brought that over, same exact thing. But instead of using old or new right here, whatever, zero or one or whatever we might say, we're gonna find the QD, the quantity demanded midpoint. That's what that is. Put that whole thing over. Now, once again, we want percent change in price. We need the delta, so I'm just gonna say P1 minus P0. Okay, and it's just the delta. Doesn't even matter if you switch these because PED, we always put it in absolute terms. Okay, why? Because PED is always a negative number because of the law of demand. So we just put it always in absolute terms. All economists do, even though it always gives you a negative number because of the law of demand. So don't even get you know, worried about what you have here, P1 or P0, because you just want the delta. And it doesn't matter if you get a negative or positive value. Now, what we want is the midpoint. So P1 plus P0 over 2. There's the midpoint. Now, I know that looks big. And for some of us, we're like, oh my gosh, I got to memorize that? No, I don't really think you do. I think you just need to think about it and understand it, and then you'll have it forever, okay? Here's how it goes, okay? Percent, percent change in a dependent over percent change of an independent. If you're asked for the price elasticity of demand, we all know QD is dependent upon the price. So it's now percent change in QD instead of percent change dependent, percent change in price. How do we do percent changes? Here it is. It's new minus old over old, new minus old over old, new minus old over old. Simple. Now they want the midpoint formula. Well, for these two little denominators, if you will, this is the denominator for the numerator, kind of weird, whatever. But this right here and this, we just want to find the midpoint. It's not hard to do. We want the midpoint price and the midpoint quantity demanded. How do you do that? You just do QD plus QD over two. So QD one plus QD zero over two and P one plus P zero over two. This and this gives you the midpoint. And now you've got a formula that no matter what is gonna give you a single value for the range. Okay, I know that was a lot, but if you watch that whole thing, you have mastered the PED formula and you've really mastered the formula for all elasticity measurements. Stay tuned, we'll see you in the next video.